it's the most important trophy in the known universe. There's a magic about it. It is magnetic. People want to put their hands on it. Got to hold it for the best day of my life. We're 90 minutes away from immortality. Get into Wembley in an FA Cup final. You just can't describe it. The whole body's tingling in anticipation. It's our chance to pit our wits against the big club. It might just be the one and only chance that we get. And when you hit them towers and you know you're there, you know. There's always the chance of a little team beating one of the bigger teams. I cannot tell you, I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> The FA Cup is the oldest and most famous club knockout competition in the world. Its magic lies in the range of teams that play in it. This year, more than 500 sides entered, from the superstars of the Premiership down to local county league amateurs. Jesus! One of our guys is late, so unfortunately, he won't be coming. I'm going to support coach. Wyvern Ho Town are Essex boys, currently gracing the second division of the Ryman League. John! John! Blending strength, yes! tactical know-how, yes! yes! and silky ball skills, yes! Come back. Come back. Come. Yes! they've already overwhelmed Chipstead, crushed Croydon Athletic, and murdered the Metropolitan Police. It's really like two different competitions in a sense. It, it gets to our cup finals when we get close to the first round proper. As far as us playing in the same competition as the likes of Liverpool and Man United, that really doesn't apply very much because they'll come in in the third round. We'd have to win eight, nine games to get that far. And the Liverpools and Man United of this world haven't even sort of thought of looking at the results in the FA Cup yet. Now for the big one. Qualifying round three. Wivenhoe Town away at Kingstonian of the Ryman Premier League and their fanatical support. On, Kingston, let's get first to the ball. Good call. It annoys me when you get people living down in Kingston and say, who do you support? I support Liverpool, Manchester United. It's my local team. Oh. You wouldn't have laughed at that, that no, would you? So I've compiled all the lineups from Kingstonian from 1919 upwards. And I think it's useful to have this record. It's a simple reason that somebody could come up to me and said, my dad used to play for Kingstonian Football Club. And I would say, well, you tell me his name. Lovely flick, come on, Eddie. And I would say something like, OK, your dad played for Kingstonian in 1960. You're yeah, quite right, well, his name was Les Gilson. Yeah. And as well as that, I've also got Hawley's appearances and how many goals that he scored. It took me nine months to do this, and I felt like a woman having a baby, actually, because when I'd finished the last one, you know, it's like a baby being born. Yes, out it popped and it's finished. Oh, I like it. Now, I keep saying this because I want people to know nobody calls my team crap. I said to the lads, look, I've always done come on UKs, come on lads, but I haven't got the breath now because of my age. So what I want you to do, lads, after I've shouted out, come on, you Ks, come on, lads, and they do it perfectly, perfectly. Come on, you Ks! <laughs> Jeff Chappell, when Jeff Chappell come to Kingstonian, or when I was told that he was going to come to Kingstonian, I said, yeah, OK, pull the other one. When you get a situation, even like we've got today, um, with the Premier League side of the Isthmian League, playing aside from Division 2, the pressure's on us. And it allows teams to play with what I call a free abandon. It does give you the chance to get that little bit of glory and also to raise some much needed cash for your club. Oh, goodness me, what a fine save that was. One nil to Kingstonian, another entry in Tim's archive. Wivenhoe had bitten off more than they could chew. That's our fifth game, in fact, with four rounds to get here. Now, if the Man United and Liverpool's come in and they win three games, they're, they're looking at a semi-final place. That's the difference between the competition. What would 
keeping your dream draw. We're not Slough Town away, because we always lose Slough Town away. In the next round, Kingstonian drew Slough Town away. They lost 2-0. Onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war. The outskirts of Southport, at Q Roundabout, McDonald's on the left. Non-league football, there's something about it, <laughs> what you can't describe, especially with these Which lads here, you know, it's fabulous. With the cross of Jesus... I always sing hymns. I feel the uh, right favour of mine. Onward Christian Soldiers is one of my favourite hymns, marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Yes, I've, I'm, I'm a, bit, a bit that way inclined, I'm religious. I, I say a prayer, yeah. Today, North Ferriby United, riding high in the Northern Counties East Premier League, are at Southport of the Vauxhall Conference. Oh, did you see that? The prize for the winner is a place in the first round proper of the FA Cup and the chance of playing a football league side. You never know, you never know. Southport's player manager is veteran Paul Futcher. I've played 25 years as a professional and uh, I watch the final like everybody else and I think, you know, what, what it must be like to play there, the thrill, lifting the cup, running around the pitch, doing the lap of honour. <laughs> we do have one fast player out there today and he is class at both of He really is. He was 41 last month and I'm amazed at how well he's playing. Got your lemonade, right? I'm not worried who they are, who they've got. Footchair to me, I'm quicker than him. First chance you get, footchair, run him. Let's run them, let's see how quick they are at the back. Switch on, right from the off. Right from the off, North Ferriby United, in green and white, are up against it. Chaz, could have buried it though, could have buried that. Should have just got him with power there. Come on. Come on. All right. It's a long, long chance since we've had a good cup run and, uh, you know, fingers crossed, I feel this could be the year. For us to make the third round would be, well, immense really, but we would definitely build another stand, I would say. Well done. Southport's ball is in the bag for the first round proper. An ideal draw would be a top Division Two side at home. And they get what they wanted, York City. Since it became sponsored four years ago, the cup itself has had a packed social diary. Most people think it's locked in a cabinet all year, but it's quite the reverse. It's great security, you can't put it back in. It's out on the road in the community, visiting factories, shopping malls, hospitals. <laughs> There's a magic about it. It's a feely, touchy thing. People want to put their hands on it. We're able to do that when we take it out there. The cup is obviously a great PR vehicle. I make sure the ribbons are facing round the right way and it's looking as it should, majestic. My job. I could do without all this bollocks, but uh, I don't expect that'll end up in the programme. York City may be a second division side best known for causing the odd cup upset themselves, but to Southport, they're giants, there for the killing. To be honest, this is a welcome break from the league because we've been going that well that um, it's, it's nice to take our mind off it and just have a real, well, not relax today, but just a change of a uh, competition. I've warned my players in a team meeting before we left that. If we think it's going to be easy and we have too many touches and we play as individuals today, we'll get a shot. It's all smiles before kickoff, but someone won't be laughing by five o'clock. 
A full house expects to see a cup upset. I'm not watching the game, I'm just catching snatches of it, so it's a bit difficult for me being a football fan to keep my eyes on the crowd and listen to what's going on and monitor the radio and uh, not watch the, the match. Normally when Liverpool are at home you'll find me in the main stand at Anfield. I'm no 31. <laughs> The crowd are becoming a bit lively, so I've deployed more police officers down to the away supporters stand. But apart from that, it's, it's going well. Weather's kept fine for us. One nil down, but... Uh... When dreams are at stake, there's no room for the faint-hearted. Take me on that last incident, please. Was there another male ejected over? I'll tell you what, it's going to get worse and worse with these decisions off the ref. Four goals conceded, three spectators ejected, two sendings off, and one vigilante attack on the ref. Maybe a top second division side wasn't such a good draw after all. Lads have to walk. They're complaining, but lads have got to walk. You can't go over the top and hit people like that and get away with it. The ref was strong and solid. They're exactly spot on. Can't cut. They've got no complaints. Nine men, pretty hard on it. And they did the best. Can't blame a can't blame for, uh, player for going in. You know, the, the couple of tackles there. It's a game, mate. What are you supposed to put in this, your tea? Or? Uh, no, no, I think they have a little more... Potent. Champagne. When I think about that, there's a lot of famous people that have held this trophy. It belongs to my team. They're going to win it this year. Bristol City. Anyone who's ever been brought up on all the great football matches remembers the great FA Cup finals. To me, I mean, it's just fantastic. There are very few places in the world where you can get, you know, clubs from um, what would now be the first or even the second division ending up getting into the quarterfinals, semifinals or even the final. And it's, it's, it's fantastic. Who won it last year? I can't remember. Who was in it last year? Good morning, Charlton Town Football Club. I've come here on January. Uh, I was offered the job to the end of the season. We got promoted to the Vauxhall Conference, of which then I was offered a two year contract. And we're fourth currently at the moment in the table. 16 quid! <coughs> It's only you having thought about it. Well, oh, you've got a 16 quid. That's shape. Where does it go? So just get it. We have there. a silly two quid fine. It can be from anything, from dirty soles on the bottom of your boots to to dodgy ties. It's a silly two quid fine. I don't find players. I don't particularly believe in finding players, especially at this level. Their uh, their football money is more or less like their pocket money. You know, if they want to go and buy something for the home, the wife needs new curtains or something like that. I mean, we've all been there and done that. They always have a chance. They can go to a jury, but then it could double to four quid. So sometimes they just pay the two quid and get on with it. We ain't Gloucester. We ain't Gloucester. Off you go. Hey. Both teams today, the all non-league, uh, the only all non-league clash. So one of us is going to go into the draw with the same clubs that play in the Premiership week in, week out. And the incentive for that is fantastic. This is how we're going to go, numbers-wise. Martin one, Steve Daly two. Players could be running out at Anfield or Stamford Bridge in the third round of the FA Cup. Francis Kings has miscued, and Hollingdale's going in here. Hollingdale, a goal! I think it's Samuels at the back post, and it's a goal for Warren Wood. The cup is viewed quite clinically now by some non-league clubs. They would love to get to the third round and draw a big club, but they realise that really and truly, if they get that draw, they've probably got to go and play at the Premiership Club or the First Division Club's ground if they've got a really large support, because the money could keep the non-league club going for three, four, five years. A lot of them must lose money week to week. Half-time, and Boreham Wood's dreams of Old Trafford and Highbury could be 45 minutes from becoming reality unless Steve Cottrell can raise his side. Arsenal, one, Newcastle, nil. 
What was Steve uh, Cottrell's last word at uh, training on Tuesday? The fans have a big role to play, he said. They certainly have a big role to play, Bob I'd suggest, in the second half. The furthest that I ever got was when I played for Wimbledon. And we thought we were going to go all the way that year. We, we thought we were having a good run and we really thought we were going to do it. You know, I don't think we'll uh, be able to emulate that, but um, it would be great to go back, obviously, with a non-league club, especially a home team. It ends one all. Both sides will be in the hat for the third round draw. The door to the big time is still open. isn't just a theory. It's happening right now. The proof is all around us in the living world. Sometimes family resemblances are buried deep in the genes, just like memories. But sometimes we can trace characteristics from one generation to the next. Improving. Evolving. Emerging. You could call it genetic engineering. Sleeker, smarter, more responsive than new Renault Laguna. Hi. I live just right upstairs. And I was wondering if I can borrow a cup of sugar. Yeah, sure. That's a warning. strike this wednesday your luck could be out of this world it's you someone once told pete he was a dead ringer for ian wright since then he's been convinced he is ian wright until he tries to play at booper we never forget there's only one pete bradley that's why we've got top sports physiotherapists you're amazing we'll help you stay that way Lads, all drinking creamy Worthington. But why do we always take the mickey? <laughs> well, if lads didn't, they'd compliment each other. You must wait. Yeah, a little bit. That's nice. This would result in a fascination with slippery skin creams, thus overcoming the friction between hand and pint of Worthington. And oh no, spillage! Tragedy. And that is why lads <laughs> take the mickey. Worthington, it's a man thing. One man gets to lift the FA Cup every time he goes to work. Chaperoning it to a never-ending succession of photo calls and parties, Laurie Good is the Cup's minder. I actually class myself as the keeper of the Cup. She's my baby and I love her. <laughs> May I have a photograph with you, please? People just can't believe it, that they say it's like the most unusual job that they've ever heard of. I think that it would be a mistake to hide this type of Cup away. I, I think it belongs to the people. And I think everybody should be uh, given the opportunity to see, to touch, to be involved. Fabulous. Sit back, Richard. You're going to give it a kiss for that? Occasionally, we, we have to stick the lid down because the children do get very excited. I've sat you down tonight, <laughs> There are some people that have been a little bit too aggressive. They can start calling the cup names and everything. Obviously, when people have had perhaps. Uh, 
one drink too many, uh, then that is where I get nervous and then I make that decision that I want to move the cup, even though it can, it can upset a few people. Any drawbacks to the job? Yes, I've had a relationship for four years that unfortunately, due to the FA Cup, has now ceased to exist. He said that I loved the cup more than I loved her. <laughs> FA headquarters at Lancaster Gate. It's the third round draw. Non-leaguers with hopes of a money-spinning clash with the rich and famous rub shoulders with England stars. <laughs> Let me give you some numbers to listen out for. First of all, the one guarantee of a non-league side, and that is 56 Cheltenham Town or Boreham Wood. The best draw that we could ever have for the experience, for the club, for the players, for the supporters would be a premiership side away. 42. 42, West Ham United. 46. We play Lincoln City or Emily. <laughs> Someone's happy. <laughs> Chelsea at home to 56 would do nicely. Number 10. Chelsea. Where's Dennis? 22. <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> Quite the crowd reaction, Manchester United. <laughs> People in non league don't play this right. for the money. Your reason to be is different from a pro player. That is the magic of the FA Cup yeah. because the opportunity Rexham. to beat someone that you're not supposed to beat is really, really big. 56. Cheltenham Town or Boreham Wood. Number 31. Reading. <laughs> First time at home. If I didn't get a chance, Cam, to right, no I had to follow the uh, premiership. Of course you did. Thanks yeah. for coming. We'll get you in the next yeah. round, mate. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> disappointing when you think of what you could have got. We swap with Chelsea or Man United if they don't want to play each other. I'm sure Boreham would have settled for the same. But having said that, we're at home, which would be nice. Which would be nice. See you. See you later. See you later. See you later. Boreham Wood versus Cheltenham, the replay. With the seconds ticking away, Cheltenham in blue and yellow are a goal up. Make that two goals up. Get in there! Bring on the red in! And for us to reach the third round is just a magnificent achievement, whoever we play. You know, and there'll be history made now because there hasn't been a third round game at Wadden Road, which we you know, we're thrilled and we're thrilled to bits that the public at Cheltenham can come and watch a Division One side at Argonne. Hey, 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 is there a fine for the subs not doing any running? It's a financial payday that has got away, but basically I feel cheated. You're going to lose some time or other in this cup. You, that's an inevitable fact. But to go out in the way that we went out is disappointing. Have you got anything to say about that? Have you got anything to say about milking it out? Yeah, that's just give you a minute. I scored the first. I just give you a minute. Is someone wrong if you didn't mention me? Hey, check's in the post. Hey, it's in the bottle on Saturday. The big day. Reading's away following is small enough to ensure the game can go ahead at Cheltenham's ground. But there's a problem. We're still waiting, Becky. The, uh, the ref's been out and had a look. He's gone back into a huddle with the uh, manager and, um, and the ground staff and stuff. And we're just waiting for him to come out and say what's going to happen. OK, stop end quote, new part. Ground staff works on the pitch. Until after dark yesterday, but by this morning there were puddles in each goal mouth. He asked for a ball to be brought out, but completed the inspection without bringing it onto the pitch, telling ground staff, and quote, I won't need that. No, it's OK, I don't need that, thanks. It's a tough decision every time you put a game off. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm up for the game. I've trained all week. I want to play the game on the day it's scheduled. I'm disappointed, the same as obviously the club are. OK. Nice one. Oh, so you wouldn't have been happy playing on this pitch either, then? 
I just, if you well, agree with I the mean, it's, I would agree with the referee yeah. that the pitch is unplayable. Yeah. One thing you can do anything about, you can't do anything about the weather. Yeah. Um, one of the most stubborn things in the world, the weather, and it doesn't yeah. pay any attention to criticism. Yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. I think, you know, it was the right decision in the end. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I was here at three o'clock and we were having a little walk around the ground with a couple of directors and I said, in four hours' time, you're going to see this place like you've never seen it before. That's fantastic. I mean, it's great for the town. It's great for the players as well, so you never know if the right result at the end of the night and it could be one to remember. There's a record crowd at Wadden Road, much to the annoyance of the Cheltenham hardcore. There's 6,000 people going to be here tonight, but well, where are they on a Saturday afternoon? I mean, if they all came on a Saturday afternoon, we'd have enough money to buy good, you know, really good players. Not, I'm not saying our players aren't good. They get injured or naughty boys and they get suspended. We haven't got anybody really to stand in. All the last four home matches here at night, we finished 1-1. Your referee this afternoon is Mr Leach from this is what cup football's all about, isn't it? What a mucky night, the non-league club against the league club, the smaller side at home, all to play for. It's the paddock that normally sing the tractor song. We can't read and we can't write, but that don't really matter. We all come from Cheltenhamshire and we can drive a tractor. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come on, the Red Army. Oh! The lovely little what, ball off on the left hand side. Get it over quicker. To Smith. Smith trying to find some runners. He finds one in Walker. Walker shields it. Surely brought down to penalty. It's a penalty. And Walker brought down by Gareth Davis. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Here it comes now. Watkins, penalty for Cheltenham. Does he score? He does! He does! Dale Watkins puts the Robins ahead from the penalty spot. Here we come, Cardiff City. Cheltenham lead by a goal to another penalty. And if you'll hear the tractor song tonight, probably the loudest you've ever heard it. Oh, hear it. Defying all logic, Cheltenham are beating a team 50 league places above them. With 15 minutes to play, they're still holding firm. Cheltenham are going to have to work really, really hard here. Reading going forward, Lovell, terrific tackle, lots of blue shirts there, an equaliser! An equaliser, Trevor Morley. That was what Cheltenham didn't want to happen. A terrific performance by Cheltenham. They played their hearts out and they've got to go to Elm Park for a replay in the third round of the FA Cup. It's finished, Cheltenham won, Reading won. Doesn't pay any attention to criticism, the weather. So no matter how much I learned about the pitch and the puddles, it didn't kick up. We were just talking about that. I mean, it just, you could see it from the sideline, you could probably see it from there. It just didn't kick up. If it kicks up, it's in his chest. Yeah. Then I think we go and win the game. John Medeski, publishing millionaire, 84th richest man in Britain and saviour of Reading Football Club. He's delighted that the tie with Cheltenham has gone to a replay. Many thanks, Andrea. Andrea, for sure. We need the cup. We need the cup runs to obviously boost up the coffers because, you know, we run at a loss, enormous loss, and it's nice when we can have the opportunity to make some extra money to help, you know, pay for some of these burgeoning costs that we have. It's an enormous challenge, I think it's the challenge as much as anything. I was just coming down to see you, Brian. I was going to give you that check. I had a frantic phone call one evening from one of the directors at the time said, if you don't sort of come on board straight away, it doesn't look too good at all. £300,000, you have to do this every week, don't we? <laughs> don't spend it all at once. I won't, don't worry. It's with some comics. <laughs> It was losing over £20,000 a week at the time, so I had to keep writing cheques out all the time, apart from buying out the shares and so on when I first arrived and paying off massive debts at the time. It was very frightening indeed. It's still very frightening. Come on, boys. Right, lads, knowing what this game is, we did damn well last Saturday. Let's keep the good luck running. Let's keep playing as well as we did last Saturday. Let's be totally professional. Let's not get drawn into anything. Let's give it... 100% for the full 90 minutes. I'll see you after the game by your drink. All the very best. Well done. You ask me this before every game, don't you? And I still duck the 
picked up the answer. I, you know, I just hope that we can perform. If we can perform and they have a bit of an off day, then you never know. Radio Gloucestershire from the BBC. This is FA Cup's third round commentary. Cheltenham at Elm Park against First Division Reading. Reading with all the territory, but as yet, nothing to show for it. I just got so excited, so involved, I automatically showed. Wouldn't matter if I was sitting next to the Queen. If they score, I should still show. Sitting next to Eileen is her friend, the Reverend Richard Cleves. 